make note of how long it takes the stream to get started. I think it's started. So hi, everybody. This is Sound Booth Theater Live. Sorry if that was a little abrasive. I'm just rushing to get ready, as always. God, I've got to find out a system that'll give me some time to breathe and chill before I get started here. You, what do you guys think? Should I bring back the intro thing? I think I wanted to. I was gonna bring it back this week, and I just totally forgot about it until literally like ten seconds ago. Um, but I don't know. There's, I I felt a certain number of you didn't really like it. Didn't really like having that intro. I thought it helped a little bit. You know, helped people um, settle in for the show, and you know, it helped them. Like, not worry about making it exactly on the, at the right time, and it also gave me that opportunity. So let me let me know what you guys think about uh, about adding that. I, I had like a five minutes, like just five minutes of, uh, you know, the Ableton stuff going by and just like kind of showing the covers of what was coming up in the show. Um, hey, don't say that, iPad. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you guys think about that. Um, I'll be right back. I need to get myself some water. All right, sorry about that. Are you, oh, hey, what's up? Paul Stokes is here, looks like. Two minutes instead of five, maybe that's better. I didn't see it at all, so I know nothing. You can uh, check out, like, I don't know when I stopped doing that. Did I stop doing it before the beginning of the year? There's at least stuff from, from last year. Um, so, I guess you could see, see from then. I'll go to the replays in the YouTube channel. Hurt, hurt. Uh, I, I have this, I don't know what I've been doing today, but my left side feels cramped from, I don't know, maybe I was leaning on my chair, stupid, or I don't know what it is, but it won't stop bother, bothering me. It's one of those, it's one of those really dull, just annoying pains. Why am I complaining about that right now? So stupid. All right, let's see here. 
So I've actually sort of written out some things. Uh, I, I need to get my advertising out of the way for for the beginning of the uh, for the beginning of the stream, and I wrote some stuff down so that maybe it'll go by a little bit faster. Let's see. I think even I think even the word ache is is dramatic for what it is. It's more like a <laughs> I don't know what to call it. I'm I'm really I'm really uh complaining about nothing. That's what I'm doing. Um you did you there was no you, you didn't miss a beginning. You you missed me going to get water. <laughs> An annoyance. Okay, so <clears throat> Uh, first of all, I want to advertise the 2018 ABR Audiobook Listener Awards. Uh, this is being put on by Paul Stokes of AudiobookReviewer.com, and I think this is a great idea, especially because this is the only audiobook awards that's got a category specifically for lit RPG um, in audiobooks, which is awesome. I mean, like... As as crazy successful as lit RPG has been as a genre in the indie uh, Kindle and audiobook market, for some reason it just people they just like don't acknowledge it as a genre. It's like people uh, other genres or the rest of the industry is kind of trying to like pretend that lit RPG is not there. I mean, mainly, maybe because, maybe because they somehow think of it as not a real thing, because, I don't know, maybe people think that it just should be, go into the sci-fi or fantasy categories, and I suppose before there were so many titles that were aiming for this specific uh, genre, I, I, that makes sense, right? You don't, you don't need an extra category unless lots of stuff is popping up for that category and this year especially lit rpg has been going nuts so <clears throat> so yeah there's a category for it uh let's see all the category they have audio drama slash multi-voiced autobiography slash memoir <clears throat> erotica fantasy history slash biography general horror extreme horror slash splatterpunk I don't know what splatterpunk is, but it sounds awesome. Uh, <laughs> humor. Uh, maybe that should be comedy. I don't know. Literary fiction. Lit RPG. Mystery. Nonfiction. Paranormal. Romance. Science fiction. Thriller slash suspense. Short stories slash collections. Young adult. And zombie apocalypse. Those are all the different categories that uh, that will be judged separately for the ABR 2018 Listener Awards. Um, now, the rest of the rules are posted on the Audiobook Reviewer site, so go to Audiobook Reviewer. Um, you won't see it on the front page, but if you look at the top, you'll see there's a link specifically for the 2018 ABR Audiobook Listener Awards. Um, so click there, and you'll be able to see all the rules for if, if you're an author or if you're an audiobook narrator, uh, and not, and and we want to make this clear: this is an indie only uh, awards. I guess I should have put that at the very beginning uh, of my little spiel here, but it's it's for indies only. So mainly narrators that publish through ACX, and so. Um, I suppose there might be certain circumstances circumstances under which you could still be uh, indie, but not publishing through ACX. But the point is, the big guys like Podium, Tantor, uh, D Dion, um, like obviously there's nothing wrong with their titles, but they get all sorts of coverage from the Audis, right? Uh, whereas, you know. The Audis, the APAC and stuff, they don't really take ACX people very seriously, so they don't really consider um, consider indies very much when it comes to awards. So this is our, it's like a, it's like a, you know, it's like a separate weight class, right? Which we need, we need, we need that to be able to get more recognition. So um, 
most of the rule, like the rest of the rules are on the website, but the th- stuff I wanted to bring to your attention is, okay, so there's going to be f- up to five finalists for each category that I listed. Um, they'll be selected, uh, wait, will be selected for, and all entry submissions and announced in, pff, let me just read it. Up to five finalists, except in the case of a tie, will be selected for each category from all entry submissions and announced in February of 2018. At least six entries must be submitted in a category or the category may be cancelled or combined. If a category is cancelled, entry fees will be refunded or entries will be reassigned to other categories with permission of the submitter. Winners will be selected by popular vote of listeners on social media and website visitors. So, uh, I guess somehow I missed this part, but there's also going to be eight judges. Um, I don't know... I don't know exactly how all eight judges work. I think... What's going to happen is there's going to be a certain number of judges uh, assigned to each category, depending on, you know, who who likes, <laughs> depending on uh, who likes what category in particular. They'll decide which ones get nominated, and then the fi- those five finalists get voted on from the listeners. So uh, uh, the overall winner in each category will get will have their covers placed in the sidebar of ABR for one year. That's awesome advertising. Uh, You will also get a fun badge to place on your website slash audiobook cover cover art. Oh, well, that's cool. So it's be... be, It looks something... I don't know, something... Something like this, maybe? Oh, no, wait. Something, uh... Something like that, right? Right? I think... That looks pretty good. The badge here. Let me see if I can blow it up so you can see it better. Beep. Um, yeah, so we get to put that on our cover. It looks fancy and nice, and uh, we can stick that on the on the blurb, right? Um, that it won the award. So... Yeah, and this will this will pump up audiobookreviewer.com as well. I mean, I know that you guys are always working real hard over at audiobookreviewer.com and you know, I I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure this isn't a full-time job for you guys, so you're finding what what time you can to do these reviews, get this all organized. So thanks so much, Paul, uh for for organizing this and for giving indies an opportunity to shine a little bit better. Um we need this kind of outlet. So Thanks so much, uh, and you guys go check it out, and uh, keep keep your ear to the ground, and watch for Facebook posts about about the uh, about the nominees and the voting process, so that you can um, so you can participate. Um, all right, so next, some more. Wow, my dog's barking. Um, next will be my little pitch for Hero of Thera, which just came out this week. So excited for this. Uh, this is by Eric Nyland, the author of the Halo novels. If you haven't read those, um, it they all get really high reviews on uh, on the Kindle market. Um, so it's kind of it's kind of natural that he would he would be the kind of person to progress to lit RPG because he actually works in the video game industry, helping write for them. I mean, I think he helped write for the. Uh, for for the Halo series for Gears of War, I don't know if he like actually did typing, but he was consulted, you know, for streamlining and and making making it a more of a making them more viable actual stories. So, uh, so he's do, do, dove in, divin, he dived, he jumped into the lit RPG market with Hero of Thera, and I gotta say. This book, in my opinion, is the epitome of lit RPG. It's it's got all that nostalgia, right? It's got a great system for the game, but it's also got a fresh take because it's not also it's also not really a VR game. It's more of like uh, I don't know, like it's it's hard to explain. You ha- you have to check it out because the stakes are high. It's hardcore mode, hardcore. Like you die in the in the game, you die. <laughs> so uh, definitely check out Hero of Thera. I actually had to develop a whole new narration voice for 
for the character of Hector, and as I was recording, I couldn't actually get a full day's recording in, because, I, I mean, I could only do like 10% of the book at a time, like each day, because my voice would just blow out. Going this low, keeping, ke keeping this voice consistent was extremely difficult for me, so... Um, this this was a, a a total victory for me. However, I mean it 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 really slowed down production, but I was able I was able to do it, and now I'm more used to it. It it is it is physically stressful, at least if it's not your your natural voice. So, um, it took me a while. I I actually I actually got sores. I actually got sores in the back, like, right in the back of my throat where it, it was, vi where, uh, my throat was vibrating the most, where I was getting that particular sound. I actually had, like, a canker sore back there after a while. Um, so, <laughs> it, it was, uh, it was, but it was a good experience, and, and now, you know, I'm more used to it. I'm, I'm down for the sequel. I can use that character's voice in, you know, as different characters now, in, in some of the books, so, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy it's out, go check it out, guys, it's already, it's already pretty much blown up, um, in a throat callus, yeah, uh, it's, it's already blown up on the Audible store, um, people are rating it, not reviewing it yet, but I'm sure Eric's liking the numbers he's seeing so far, so, Hero of Thera, out now, go buy, also, go buy, Ever realm or if you want uh, if you want a free audiobook if you're in the twitch chat you can request a free audiobook I'm giving those away today so um, I did gain a level in the Hector voice I'm gonna call it the Hector voice actually now that I'm talking about that again I'm just gonna switch it right back uh, actually uh, Eric Nyland gave me direction to sound like um, Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange. That's that was that was my direction. I don't know if that sounded. I don't know if that really sounds like Benedict Cumberbatch, but uh, this is as, about as close as I could get. So, um, I, I mean, I, I really love that him as an actor. His voice is incredible. So it it was. I was really determined to get that right. So um, yeah. Anyway, sorry. Back to Everrealm. Everrealm is out as well. It came out this week as well because. We, uh, uh-oh. Someone wants one. Nusus wants an audiobook. Uh, is that a request? Because I'm giving out either Everrealm or Hero of Thera. Let me know which one you want in, in the, uh, in, in the chat. And Sin, would you mind, would you mind keeping track of who wants books so that I can get get back to them at the end of at the end of the stream everrealm okay everrealm by jake bible um i am i'm so excited for this one to have come out and mainly because i really like jake bible's work uh he he's he's fast paced uh succinct but still very descriptive, still very evocative. His characters are great. His 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 dialogue is really fun. You know, you you get this nice back and forth, and everyone's got a very distinct flavor. So it was extremely natural and easy for me to record this book. Um, actually, this is like one of the first books I've done in a long time where it was first person, and I just used my natural voice. I've been I've been doing like it's so much so much of a contrast between this and Hero of Thera. Uh, because for Hero of Thera, I had to go so much out of my comfort zone. For Everrealm, it was completely within my comfort zone, and I just, I was able to crank it out just like that. Um, it's very, very funny. The characters and dialogue are solid. It, it, you know what the, the story actually reminds me of? The Princess Bride meets, like, Monty Python and the Holy Grail in a in an epic zombie MMO apocalypse. It's it's really fun. However, one problem it has and I for me it wasn't a problem. I mean, I 
This is one of those books that I read it all the way through before saying, yes, I'm taking this job. And you know what? I even saw the reviews for it before I accepted the job, and I still took it because because I, I really like it. I, I don't I don't get the hate. I mean, I kind of get it. it. It's it's this, you know, there's I guess the that the genre needs people to protect it and to determine what is and what isn't lit RPG. And if listeners feel that way, I guess. You know, if read, readers feel that way, you know, that's their prerogative, but for me, I feel like I feel like they're hating on it for the for the wrong reasons. And and I I always put story and craftsmanship before anything else. And so if there's any sort of nitpicking that you can do about the genre, I mean genre to me, it's like a backdrop. You know, it's like it it's secondary to what what needs to be there. And if I mean I I can get I understand criticism for it, but to knock it down so many pegs for that particular stuff I don't know. Look, your tastes are your tastes. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be mad about it or what or anything. But I think. I think that that's kind of lowering the potential for this title to really reach people. Is is that 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 gripe that some people have about it not being lit RPG enough? But it is what it is. Go go make your own decision, guys. It's it's out now. Um, I really enjoyed it. I wouldn't have accepted the 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 job if I didn't. Um, so. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to I'm going to go quit Google Chrome cuz it's sucking down my CPUs. Oops. Oh no. That got rid of my that got rid of my Twitch chat. I'll be right back, guys. I'm one of those types of people who surfs with a million tabs open. I blame I blame Michael Fenton for introducing me to that technique. All right, sorry about that. Okay. Yeah, I know. All, all tabs are 100% necessary. Okay, and now I have one last pitch. Sorry, guys. This is taking so long. But Challenge Unbound Death Lord Book 1 will be coming out very soon. I, I believe August 15th. Uh, it's by Edward Castle, who I think this is his only book. He's a, What's really interesting about it is he's a... Um, he's he's a Brazilian guy, and he wrote it in English, and he still did a a really great job with it. Uh, there there was there were some typo issues that I had to deal with while while reading it, but it wasn't too big of a deal. I was able to get it done. This is actually the longest audiobook I've ever recorded, and it was for Podium Publishing. Thanks, Podium, for for uh, picking me for this this job. Um, I think you guys are are really gonna like it. It's it's funny, it's epic, lots of stats, interesting idea, um, uh, interesting motivations from the from the character. There's mystery to figure out about him. Um, so and, and I believe it's one of those titles that's been around for a while that people always reference. Um, 
from the Lit RPG group. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think you guys will really like this one. Um, it's out for pre-order already, and it's actually climbing up my my front page. If you go to Audible and search my name and then click my name, uh, it it shows things in in order of relevance, as in you know what's getting bought up right now. And it's in pre-order form. It's like in the middle of my first page already. So, um, go check it out, guys. It's uh, it it's ready ready for your purchase. Um, and like I said, out August 15th. Um, now, there is a sequel that is supposed to be coming out, but Edward is still working on it, you know. It, I suppose he's a, he's a perfectionist type of person, um, which which is a good thing for, for listeners and, and readers. I mean, in this market, in the lit RPG market, it's not like there's any shortage of other stuff to keep you occupied for when the second one, or to, for your wait till the second one comes out. Um, so the fact that he's taking his time uh, is, is a good thing, in my opinion. But uh, it's not sure when it's going to be out, but Podium will let me know, and I'll, I'll be able to schedule it when, when that's possible. Um, but yes, I, I recorded this quite a while ago, so I'm really excited to see it get back, uh, get onto the Audible market finally. And the new cover is awesome. Uh, really cool. So that is all of my pitching for today. Now it is requests only time. Um, let me look at let me look at the uh, the poll, see how it has done since I started this. Okay. All right, so it's official. We got a three-way tie at the bottom. But we're definitely reading How to Avoid Death on a Daily Basis by V. Moody. Uh, the Fiasco in News by Stephen Morse. Actually, wow, that one really shot up there uh, in the s- small amount of time it was on the poll. Um, and looks like I got, I got my choice um, between Office Wars... Game Frame Online and The Path of Transcendence. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it as lit RPG as possible. We're going to do Office Wars and Game Frame Online uh, by James Patton and Adric Mayall, respectively. Oops, I didn't download the Office Wars cover. So here goes. I'm putting it in. You'll see it in a bit. Don't worry. It's I'm not I'm not even starting on that one anyway. Okay, so for our first uh our first read, we will be doing how to avoid death on a daily basis. Now I found I found this book a long time ago. Um probably at least six months ago. Uh, and I was really interested in trying it out. And I tried to get a, get a hold of, of the author to see if he'd be interested in me doing it. And he never, I never got a response. But then just recently, like last week, Aram Hassa, I think that's his name. Uh, yes, he, he requested it. And I was really excited about that. Because, um, I, I mean, I, I saw the cover and I, He's actually got a, a nice website that's kind of like Royal Road, except cleaner and less people. Um, so I looked at that and I was like, wow, this guy's, this guy's pretty cool. He's probably got good business sense and, you know, it might be a good opportunity. So I'm, I'm really glad to be doing it now. And then when I started reading it and started getting the instructions and stuff, uh, I found out that it's all, that the author is British, that the characters are all British, so I'm really excited to do this. Uh, I I just love accents, um, and um, this little bit of lit RPG is a good good way to 
get some exercise for it. So there's, I'm going to be doing a couple cha chapters from this one. Um, let's see. All right, so I'm going to... I'm going to look at the uh, requests again real quick, see exactly. There's There were two different chapters, and I only got one from Aram, but that's okay because I got the book on Kindle for free. It is available for free right now, so you should ch go pick it up while you can. Where is it? Arg. Aram's post isn't here. Okay, uh, I don't remember what I don't remember what the other chapter was, but I'm gonna do the V. Okay, I'm gonna do this chapter first. Scene: The characters are traveling towards the city of Dargo. After making their grand escape from another city, which is being besieged by a monster army, army, they find a huge army of lizardmen crossing the path to Dargo. So they decide to camp in a nearby forest while waiting for them to pass. Late at night, one of the characters comes running back to the camp, screaming, Zombie. Chapter start. All right, characters in order of appearance. Colin, the MC, all thoughts are his. First person thoughts are smartass, otherwise he's a pessimistic and manip manipulative, manipulative coward. Um, Maurice, black Batman nerd, likes to nitpick and act as an investigator. Claire, skinny, big-nosed girl with a high-pitched voice, gets angry fast. Flossie, a plump, nervous girl with a heavy brummy accent. Okay, brummy accent. So, I I did this much studying on the, on the Birmingham accent, um, Birmingham Birmingham accent, and it's very difficult. Uh, thankfully, Flossie's not in here very much, uh, but I'll do the best I can with it. The rest I think I can handle. Um, uh, Black guy from from the UK is going to be a bit tricky too, but the rest I think I've got. So, let's get to this. <clears throat> Thank you, V Moody, for letting me read this on my show, by the way. I hope you, you are here, and I hope you will enjoy. Chapter 73 Night of the Living Zombers There's a mad rush as everyone grabbed their weapons. I already had mine in my hand, so I was ready. Kind of. I had played a lot of video games where you killed zombies. I had also watched many zombie movies. So, I had a rough idea of what to expect. Hitting them in the head was the only way to stop them, and if they bit you, you turned into one. But did, those, but did those rules apply here? You also had to take into consideration which, which type of zombie we were dealing with. The slow, weak ones that overwhelmed you with numbers. The fast, crazy ones who ran up walls. Neither would be fun, but the slower ones at least gave you the option to run away. Was it even a zombie Flossie had seen? Everyone started asking Flossie what exactly she had encountered, which only made her more, flu which only made her more flustered. A low moan shut them all up. The price is ir irresistible. You're right. Go download it. <laughs> we all pointed our weapons in the direction of the noise, and then the answer to all our questions came shuffling into camp, dragging one leg, arms reaching out ahead of it. The good news was that it appeared to be on its own. It looked, it looked how you would imagine a zombie to look. Flesh hung off it in stringy clumps. In some places, the skin was stretched so thin, holes had appeared showing the bones beneath. On the right side of its face, the jawbone and teeth were completely exposed. The nose was completely missing, and it had no eyelids, making its eyes bulge in their sockets, and patchy hair sprouted from, it, from the top of its head. It was, however, quite smartly dressed, buttons all done up and clothes nicely matching. The zombie stopped when it saw us, The one stopped, the zombie stopped when it saw us and looked around, awkwardly moving its neck from side to side. 
Oh, he said in a slightly high-pitched voice. I do apologise. I didn't realise there was anyone here. I don't want to intrude. I'll see myself out. He started to turn around, one degree at a time, like a tanker turning at sea. Wait, I said. Aren't you a zombie? His, so his shoulders hunched up and he stopped moving. Slowly, the zombie turned back. It's hard to read facial expressions when half the person's... It's hard to read facial expressions when half the person's face is missing. At first, I thought the scrunched-up features indicated great pain. Then I realised he was offended. Is there really need for that? Is there really need for that sort of language? We're just people trying to live our lives. There's no need for name calling. So, you aren't undead. The zombie's body went limp, and his arms fell to his side. Ugh. Of course not. What does that even mean? Undead? It's not even a real word. How can you undead anything? It makes no sense. Well, said Maurice, theoretically, um, damn, uh, let's see. Theoretically, a necromancer can, the zombie raised, the zombie raised a hand. Please keep your racist theories to yourself. Yes, I have a skin condition that makes me look a little different, but in here, he tapped his chest with a bony finger, and I mean very bony, beats a heart just like yours. I would have found it easier to believe him if every tap on his chest hadn't produced a hollow thud like the slamming of a coffin lid. The way he was going on about his skin condition, you'd think he was talking about a... You'd think he was talking... You'd think he was talking about a little eczema. This disease, is it contagious? I asked. You people, he said with great disdain. No, you're perfectly safe. It's called Zombidermis. Yes, I know, that's where the name comes from. But please refrain from using it. It's not a cute nickname. It's very offensive. Zombie this and zombie that. We have names, you know. Mine is Jespert. How do you do? We all introduced we all introduced ourselves somewhat sheepishly. See how easy that was? All we want is to live our lives, raise our families and be happy. Just like everyone else. But because of the way we look, people assume we're evil and want to murder everyone. As soon as they see us, the name-calling begins. Can you imagine what it's like for our children? <sniffs> he suddenly grabbed his jaw with his hand. Are you all right? <sniffs> I braced myself. Was he losing control? Were tentacles about to sprout out of his, were tentacles about to sprout out of his head? He seemed perfectly rational, but that didn't mean he wouldn't attack us. I <clears throat> <sighs> toothache. He, po he poked at his teeth, through the holes in his cheek. Receding gums makes the teeth very sensitive. Receding was a gross understatement. He had no gums. That's why I'm out here. <laughs> There's an herb. There's a herb called Clovis that helps ease the pain. It grows in these woods. A little blue flower. He looked around like he might spot it. He looked around like he might spot it. Okay, so for the, like, London, like, the the London accent, where uh, you take out a lot of the t T's at the end, stuff like that, spot it. It's like, okay, to be accurate, you'd want to do the glottal stops for the T's, but for the sake of people listening, it's like, where where do you draw the line there? He looked around like he might spot it. Is that right? Does that sound accurate, but still listenable? Wouldn't it be easier to look during the day? Asked, Cla asked Claire. It would, but sunlight plays havoc with my skin. And no, that doesn't mean I'm a vampire either. He rolled his eyes, which was unsettling. By the looks of you, your visitors, right? Arrived fairly recently. We all nodded. I understand. It can't be easy finding yourselves in a new world where everything looks strange and scary, 
But please, don't judge people purely on the way they look and unfounded rumours. Take the time to make up your own mind. That's all I ask. Prejudice. Prejudice is a terrible thing. Come on. I think we all felt suitably chastened. Chastened? Chastened? I think we all felt suitably chastened and mumbled our apologies. <clears throat> I'll leave it to you then. Have a good evening. He started to turn again, but then stopped. By the way, you do know it's quite dangerous round here at the moment, don't you? The lizard men are on the march and their rip and their main army will be coming through any time now. Their main army? I said. You mean that procession on the main road? Oh no, that's just the advance party. Once the main army get it Once the main army gets here, this whole place will be crawling with them. You don't want to be here when that happens. Horrible creatures, lizard men. Completely untrustworthy. Always fighting for no reason. The females get pregnant before they can even stand upright. And their food smells awful. I've been saying for years they shouldn't just defend the border with Monsterland. They should build a wall. But no one listens. I'll tell you, the, the only good lizard man is a dead lizard man. You know, said Claire in a tone that made me want to swiftly walk away. Hold on, let me try that again. I need to do a good SJW, you know. <laughs> you know, said Claire. Uh, you know, said Claire, in a tone that made me want to swiftly walk away. For someone who talks a lot about not judging people on the way they look, you sound a little bit prejudiced yourself. Jasper seemed taken aback. Me? You mean about lizard men? Oh no, that's totally different. They aren't people, they're monsters. You can't treat them as equals. They'll eat you. He'd become much more animated once he started to talk about his views on lizard men. And it didn't stop there. I'll tell you who you should really watch out for. Mermaids. Oh, those bastards. They come crawling out of the sea with hardly any clothes on and set up stalls by the roadside selling their fish and their seafood platters. It's disgusting. Seriously, get away from me, Ads. Sorry. <laughs> that doesn't sound so bad, said, said Maurice. It's taking jobs away from honest fishermen. The land should be for people with legs, shouldn't it? They should go back to where they came from. And the fishermen should stay out of the sea? I asked. Well, no. They have to make a living, obviously. But it's the principle. It was hard to tell exactly which principle he was talking about. One minute he was all love and peace and don't judge a book by its cover, and the next he wanted to kill everything that annoyed him. A liberal racist, but fiscally conservative. In our world he would have made a fine politician. Other than that, he seemed quite nice. Ooh, ooh, said Flossie. Her fidgeting had been steadily increasing over the last few seconds. I want to see a bear maid. Fortunately, that isn't possible, said Jasper. We're too far from the sea here, and they don't travel well. Or so I've heard. I'm happy to say, I'm happy to say I've never encountered one myself. Hold on, said Claire. You've never actually met a mermaid, but you're sure they're evil monsters based on what you've heard from other people. Doesn't that strike you as a little ironic? No, said Jasper. There's nothing ironic about being half fish. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense Claire was about to lose it Jasper seemed unaware of the danger he was in You should head for Dargo You'll probably be safe there That's where we were headed I said But the lizard men are blocking the way We were hoping to cross the road once they passed by But it sounds like that won't be for a while Oh, you can't use the road 
You could use the tunnels, though. It takes a little longer, but much less dangerous for the most part. There are tunnels, I said. To Dargo? Well, not all the way, but they'll get you past the lizardmen. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your evening. <sighs> he started to turn again, hand clamped against his jaw. Um, said Flossie. Is this what you were looking for? She pulled a small blue flower out of her hair and held it out. Oh, Clovis! A smile cracked his face. A smile cracked his face wide open. Yes, that is how I meant it. Thank you. Jasper took the flower from his flower in his skeleton. Jasper took the flower in his skeletal, partly decomposed hand and popped it into his mouth. He rubbed his jaw. Then stretched. Ah, that's better. Suddenly, he was able to move a lot more freely, and his whole body seemed to relax. Okay, grab your stuff and follow me. As a sign of my gratitude, I'll show you the tunnels. Behave yourselves, and we m and I may even treat you to a home cooked meal. And no, you won't be on the menu. I don't eat meat. It's terrible for the complexion. I suppose you're all carnivores," he said with a, qu he said with quite some disgust. "I can see it's going to take you a little while to pack everything up, so let me take this opportunity to tell you the advantages of a raw food diet." <laughs> he proceeded to lecture us on the talk. He proceeded to lecture us on the joys of vegetables. It had been scary enough when we'd it had been scary enough when we'd assumed he was a zombie, but it turned out Jasper was something even worse. A vegan. <laughs> Alright, that's so good. Alright, so that was one chapter of How to Avoid Death on a Daily Basis. Um I can't remember I can't remember where uh I I can't remember where um Oh hey, V Moody's here. What's up, man? I hope I hope uh I did that well. Hey, I'm I'm going to ask you real quick because it didn't show up in the requests, but um there's, there's like a weed smoking scene or something that that Aram requested, and I'm wondering if you know which chapter it is. Oh, what? Hold on. I guess I was reading something from a different book. Uh, yeah. I, I okay. So that. What I just read wasn't even from the first book. I think that was from maybe book two or something because it says it's chapter 70. 70 something? 73? Yeah, it said chapter 73. So uh, all I have is the first book. So I wouldn't even have. So never. I, I, I guess. I guess I wouldn't be able to do another chapter for you, but maybe if you want to request again. For another SBTL, I'm I'm glad to do it because I really I really enjoy this material. Um, let's see. All right, so our next request. Thanks again, V Moody, for allowing me to read this on my uh, on my show. And next, we'll be doing the fiasco in news by Stefan Morse. I believe Stefan is here with us now. What's up, Stefan? Now I have I actually read a little bit of this on a request only a long time ago when it was still not a finished book. Uh, yeah, it would have been chapter sixty four for how to avoid death, but I don't have that, so never mind. Um, so let me see, Stephen Morse. Here we go. So uh, yeah, I, I I think it was from the first chapter that S Stefan uh, had me read from a long time ago. <laughs> so now we're gonna dig a little deeper. <clears throat> uh, 
All right. Bum, 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 bum. I'm going to read his description stuff first. <clears throat> okay. It's done from the main character's tone of voice, Adam Millard. It's really a glorified disclaimer with a bit of humor. Here is the character for the scene, Adam Millard. Okay, so I, I it's been a long time, so I'm not sure if I'm going to get the same exact voice for this dude as last time, but I'll do my best. We're going for dry, sarcastic tone on a young adult male. Lighter voice where possible, not a deep male or high-pitched. Timing is the hardest part. His entire narrative will pause and address the reader with some anecdotes, so be prepared to switch briefly and address the viewer. I'm super good at this. Uh, check out On the Hit List by Timothy Dalton. Um, it, it, you're covered, dude. Don't worry. This is an opening blurb, which is essentially... Any, okay. This is an opening blurb, which is essentially any trigger warnings, tone settings, amusement, implying nonsense a listener may need. The fiasco news is full of sarcasm, superpowers, and over-the-top characters, but some people may need to be reminded that it's an adult war world. Before we get started, there's a few things to point out. This is the first of a three-part tale. It's mostly told in order. At times, I'll step out and tell you about other parts of my life, but they'll be brief, I swear. Oh, wait. Okay, so this is actually the character talking here. Okay, before we get started, there's a few things to point out. This is the first of a three-part tale. It's mostly told in order. At times, I'll step out and tell you about other parts of my life, but they'll be brief, I swear. For example, I might reference something like the time I was possessed by two demons. Eventually, four battle nuns, which is not at all as hot as it sounds, strung me up and exorcised the demons. That is not innuendo. It was disgusting. It's worth noting that I curse in thought and deed. Other people do it too. This is an adult world, and my life is kind of fucked up. Cussing, such as the word fuck, gives me a proper outlet that the word fudge simply doesn't measure up to. It's also worth noting that I notice how ladies are endowed. I'm 21, and at the start of these events, I still hadn't had a girlfriend. Plus, noticing ladies wearing spandex is extremely difficult to avoid. If you don't believe me, you're lying or dead inside. It's also worth noting that some events happen to me that don't directly relate to the others. We'll wander a bit, because my life doesn't follow a sane timeline. My life is a constant crash from one crazy event into the next. It's my curse, you see. I attract all sorts of power-fueled events. Some events involve imaginary creatures created by the human subconscious, which can be twisted. Some events involve people trying to handle curses like mine, which is also messed up. In fancy terms, this is a journey of self-discovery, being chased by a woman, and deluded hope. But we'll start with Ted. Everything that happened occurred because of him and his offer. And we'll end with Alice. Everything ended because of Alice. I'm fairly sure I've gone barking mad. So, viewer beware. You'll have to be kind of crazy to keep up. All right. That that was a cool that was a cool little thing. All right. Ted Rose, Telegraph. Ted is hard to pin down. His biggest gimmick is switching accents almost randomly. Imagine Robin Williams doing early stand-up. Oh my god, this is going to be so fun. Not serious like What Dreams May Come or the scene in, in Mrs. Doubtfire where he's doing voices for the unemployment agency. His default should be as close to natural Robin Williams as... All right, I, I, I can do that. I can do that. Um, I, I don't think I can do exactly his voice, but I, I can do what you're talking about. Red Queen. Whatever you can do to give it spittle and maybe sound like any Red Queen from any Alice movie. Give it spittle. Like a lift? Like a... Ah! ah! Okay. The story itself starts with Adam being abducted, again, by Ted Rose, also known as the B-list supervillain Telegraph. Cue villain voice. He knows what you're doing before you do it. 
All right. At this point, Ted revealed he also works for a news website which tracks heroes. Now he's offering to take Adam as a business partner by recording his adventures for public fame, legal reasons, and to expose heroes and villains through some someone that can't be intimidated. Because they can't stop Adam, n- no one can stop the Adam. Except maybe Netflix. Okay. Who are we starting off with here? All right, so this is Ted. Starts with Ted. Okay, here it goes. If you're serious about this, find my lawyer, Jade Hartland. Sort out the sort out the paperwork and leave a contact number. When I'm in New York next, I'll call to arrange something. I can probably fit you in between the the next what? The next giant bug attack and a possessed let me hmm. I f I'm not hitting it right. It's this page turn. Okay. Maybe I need to like buy the docs of viewer because it keeps it keeps it keeps I don't know, giving me advertisements and it's really not good. If you're serious about this, if you're serious about this, find my lawyer, Jade Hartland. Sort out the paperwork and leave a contact number. When I'm in New York next, I'll call to arrange something. I could probably fit you in between... Come on, do it. Between the next giant bug attack and a possessed football stadium. God damn. This is the worst app ever. New York, or at least some part of the state, was a frequent stop in my life. I ended up there for at least a few days every month. But that may take forever! Oh wait, that's Adam. Okay. The first one is- the first thing is Adam? Okay, shit. Sorry guys, I'm- fucking up because of my stupid app. Let me give myself some air real quick. Okay. If you're serious about this, find my lawyer, Jade Hartland. Sort out the paperwork and leave a contact number. When I'm in New York next, I'll call to arrange something. I can probably fit you in between the next giant bug attack and a possessed football stadium. New York, or at least some part of the state, was a frequent stop in my life. I ended up there for at least a few days every month, every other month. But that may take forever, Ted yelled, and hurried after me with a panicked look. He waved to one lady he cut off and produced his fake friendly smile. We can't miss a minute! What if the next giant bug attack is tomorrow? I had been joking about the giant bug attack. No one ever did giant bugs. That was just silly. Rats, yes. Rats could be trained. Bugs, especially bees, were not a good idea. Two large men appeared as I walked forward. One grabbed me, but was intercepted by the other. I had no idea... Where we go? I had no idea what they were after. They swung at each other and ended up in a nearby building, knocking over innocent bystanders. Hey! I shouted. Can one of you fine gentlemen get me to New York? They ignored me and continued their tussle. I had no idea what they were saying. Their clothes didn't resemble any known heroes. It looked as though two giant men had randomly decided to brawl in broad daylight. We should be filming this. Ted had one hand under his armpit, and his and his clothes flickered. I shook my head and refused to watch him pick out a proper suit for the street fight. Screw it, I muttered, then walked off. The woman walking dogs across the street had to be here because of my powers. If I could disrupt her, she might get me to New York. Or trigger. Or trigger... I don't know. Anything. Ted was right. Sooner was better. My foot hit the street, and four vaguely related events happened in rapid succession. To anyone else, it would have been nerve-wracking, but I expected it. Being proactive with my power set was like knocking on the president's door with an axe, then wondering what had caused the Secret Service to get so bent out of shape. First, I stepped toward the lady walking by with a dog of a different color. Second, she looked at me in horror and screamed. Third, a truck, 
already in motion, blared its horn while the brakes screeched. Fourth, the ground beneath my foot vanished, and I fell into an interdimensional portal. Fuck! My wail traveled upward as the world turned chaotic. Gravity still worked. Branches or roots passed by. The fading light swirled into technicolor. Small creatures appeared from nowhere and chased each other through the space I had just passed. Symbols for spades and hearts marched by on leaves. I closed my eyes before the sensation drove me to wretch. Hitting bottom knocked the wind out of me. I rolled to one side, then held still. My eyes refused to open. My fingers grasped around to get a feel for which nightmare land I had been transported to this time. It felt as though events were happening far faster than they normally should. At the very least, I'd expected time to walk calmly to a hotel and sleep for the night. One simple night before ninjas burst in because they thought my room was the one ten floors up with a movie star inside or something. I just realized something. I bought your book. Where'd it go? There it is. So I would rather read from that than this PDF. Um, let me find... I'm going to say 10 floors up. Not green. What? 10 floors up. And it and it's taken forever to to search for it. Why? How about 10 floors? Is that good? Can you just do 10 floors? Yeah, all right, cool. Now I will look at the last line. I really have to figure out what uh, what I can do about this app. Maybe I need to buy a new one. Melt faces. Okay. I got it. I got it. Dirt lined the floor. Long rope-like strands hung to one side and rustled as I grabbed them. Mad laughter echoed softly like a television in the next hotel room over. Please not Wonderland, please not Wonderland, please not Wonderland. My chant increased in pitch as a worse scenario occurred to me. Please not mole people, please not mole people, please not mole people. Mole people were bad because they simply didn't get it. I swore someone had sat in a basement all day, genetically altering billions of them in one go, but forgetting to add anything but a vague desire to topple the surface world. Every single one of them had been brilliant, but vaguely autistic. Were they human? I might have felt awkward for my callous observation, but mole people were biters with rabies. Wonderland often varied between insanity, hallucinogens, and murderous little girls named Alice. I only needed to avoid the jabberwocky and never drink from the small bottles. Pastries in other dimensions were traps in general. I racked my brain for other bits of information from past encounters. Oh, right. Someone would be nearby. Let that be a warning for you. If you're teleported to a strange place, there's always someone observing. Always. Every single time. Even if it's a giant eyeball for a sun. At least two distinct nasal-sounding creatures were breathing heavily nearby. Cracking my eyelids a little revealed <clears throat> cracking my eyelids a little revealed a soft glow. Two sets of hairy feet were close by. Please not Wonderland, please not mole people, please God, for once send me to a beach with bikini babes, an underground lake. My mumbling did no good. As you might imagine, when I opened my eyes to see two hairy, round, brown looking versions of the white rabbit and what had to be the Red Queen, I went a bit crazier than normal. There were only so many events a man could remain calm through. God damn it! No! I shouted while banging my hands on the ground. My scream echoed down the halls. The tantrum scared the white rabbit. He shuffled or hopped or whatever moles did behind the second ugliest red queen I had ever seen. Oh, 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 oh! Another person next to me mumbled. The red queen's nose flared wide. Snot hung down with brown material that was hopefully dirt. She pointed one hand with a root-shaped scepter. 
Adorning its tip was a half-chewed turnip. Her mouth opened to proclaim our fate. Off with my head, I mumbled in time with her declaration of, Off with their heads! I held on to hope that the Alice here wasn't batshit insane, but it seemed unlikely. Then it hit me. She had said, their heads, as in plural. I looked for the source of the nose, of the noise, I looked for the source of the noise next to me that had complained of pain. Maybe Alice was here already. A shudder passed through me as I recalled the last Alice. She hadn't bathed in weeks and had wielded a comically large knife. Instead, Ted's dirt-covered face sat upside down. He lay there and rubbed his forehead, where a lump had formed. Heavy bags and lighting made his eyes look like twin smiles. Fuck a duck, I muttered. Where are we? he mumbled. Footsteps marched down the wide open tunnel we sat in. Does it matter? I would suggest you start running, I said dryly. Is that sarcasm? Stop your chatter Stop your chattering, you pink worms. Why are their heads still on? the Red Queen yelled. Gobs of grossness flew out and splattered nearby. I swallowed back bile and shook my head. She smelled like raw sewage mixed with kimchi. Oh, Ted, ca Ted said calmly. He stopped to dust off his suit even before standing. This is new. Maybe for you, I muttered. My pleasant buzz had been ruined, leaving me with a headache and unsteady vision. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, is this, is this dossier things, um, let me find, let me look at your uh, PDF and see, it, I, it occurs to me that maybe you might have gotten rid of that part. Okay. Part three. The scene, this scene is about halfway through the book. Adam has been on a few adventures already during one story, being dashed from place to place. Right now he's arrived in New York City and was being driven off by police from a public indecency charge, which was totally not his fault. The actual pro problem started with a drunken black-furred unicorn eating rose bushes in another dimension. Okay, this is so, so fucking funny. But we're in New York now, so that means an alien spaceship has crash-landed and it's currently being attacked by mole people for perfectly logical reasons. There is an orb mentioned in here, which follows Adam around, recording him. His, its name is Flux, as in what the Flux is wrong with this situation. Oh, see, see the cover. Okay, so it's like, uh, it's like one of the eyeballs from Portal. All right, Adam... Crystalline, small, shiny, child alien, clipped words, hyperactive, high pitch. Policewoman, generic throwaway character, blue shirt instead of red, use whatever female voice you'd like. Mole people, gruff with extra spittle. Okay, so lots of spittle in these characters. Mole people, in New York, I mumbled while swaying. It's like my birthday and Christmas rolled into one. That fucking orb floated by my head zooming in on the action. I didn't even know how the thing had made it through our police car escort or kept up while that whole unicorn event had happened in another dimension. The suspicious side of me had a few ideas, but they would wait until meeting with Ted. He had a home somewhere in New York. Oh, he had a home somewhere in New, New, New York. I could have done that better. He had a home somewhere in New, New, New York. That had to be close. Bright beams of energy shot at the mole people's vehicles. Burn marks littered the area. A tiny figure could be seen on top of a pillar that jutted twenty feet out of a crater. It was as if someone had stuck a javelin, or tower, in the middle of a four-lane thoroughfare and declared war. Pew! Pew! The child-sized creature made of crystal on the pillar shouted. Its lips were distinct enough to read even for me, despite the background noise. With each word, a laser of light formed from its fingertips, then fired— 
they were launched at moving targets, which included fleeing pedestrians and law enforcement officials. Pew! <laughs> My police captors were still struggling to escape the car. The mail had roused a bit. More people were getting away with surprising calm. Everyone came off as startled, a bit afraid, but not hysterical. I continued toward the convenience store. It was self-centered of me. Along the way, a dozen different ways to fail at helping stop the monsters crossed my mind. Laser beams continued to pew-pew at me and everyone else without regard. Three minutes had passed, or something close. I saw a figure darting through the crowd. A man in yellow and blue tights gathered up people, then vanished. Speedsters were almost as bad as teleporters. At least two heroes were on scene, but they prioritized removing the civilians from harm. Stick to cover! Sir! Sir! The police officer's voice sounded shrill behind me. It was the same woman from the car. How her voice cut through the chaos was beyond me. I wasn't carrying a dead body. I didn't need to hold on to anything but my pants. I disregarded such silly orders, then walked on as though the world couldn't hurt me. After two minutes of staggering, or thereabouts, I reached the store, eased through the broken glass door, and shortly exited with a bit of food. The employees had long since fled. Trash from my snack only made it a few feet toward the mole people army. They took offense anyway and fired clumps of dirt and disgusting smelling goo. It clung to store walls, then ate through cement. Steam hissed, and cracks formed in the supports. I stood there, trying to apply a more proactive mindset while near misses were exchanged around me. My week off from my my week off from Crazy Town turned the recent madness into a detached scene. You may find it weird, but I felt like a person in a dream. Invincible, above it all, and too distracted by other issues to really care. Pew! The tiny creature shouted with its finger pointed like a child's mock gun. Pew, pew! The back end of the creature and tower of white... Yeah, come on, come on, there we go. The back end of the creature and tower of white were easier to see from the shop's exit. Goo hung from the middle of the pillar, and it threatened to topple soon. Get out of here! Someone in uniform was waving me away. I stared at them and raised an eyebrow. Two blasts from the mole people exploded, and both hit the white pillar. A giant car went flying into the dirt-tunneling machine's side. The car bounced off the huge armored vehicle and onto the ground. Their invasion, tunnel their invasion vessel remained undamaged. A painful idea flashed through my head, but I moved anyway. I gazed up at the jutting pillar, then moved ten steps to the left and four ahead. My feet stung. The last two goo blasts were chewing through the pillar like a lumberjack might tear down trees. It crumbled slowly at first. The tiny, pewing, crystal-shaped being swiveled, and its eyes lit up in horror. I shrugged, then waved. I held out my arms in hopes that whatever curse which fueled my life might make this brilliant disaster work out. The pillar snapped as the crystal creature jumped toward my outstretched arms, I braced myself for impact as its weight slammed into my chest and a flailing limb caught my face. I grunted, but remained upright. In the end, I had saved a falling alien from its doomed whatever it was. This was my life. Dumb luck screwed me up constantly. But sometimes, just sometimes, I felt pretty damn cool. The alien whatever weighed nothing at all. Even my emaciated and exhausted body could lift the being. Even my emaciated and exhausted body could lift the being. It sat there, half-cradled by my catch, and studied me. Hi, I said to the child-sized alien. Its face glowed brightly, then flashed with a mix of red and green. The creature squirmed and stood quickly. It kicked me in the groin, and I bent over in fresh agony and groaned. Mr. Big! Thank you, Mr. Big! Help! Please! it said in a high-pitched chirp with clipped words. I ground my... <clears throat> I ground... <clears throat> I ground my teeth together while catching my breath. Goo splattered overhead. The police officer from before charged over and grabbed my arm. She pulled me behind a barricade as the little alien provided cover fire by pewing everything. Yes, this is the same one. It was on... Yeah. Yeah. 
Spidey suit. Help, please. Scary dirt things. Need Lady Alexandria. Big, big lady help. The police officer nodded, then spoke into a shoulder-mounted device. I rocked and tried to get myself to a stable place. We need to find better cover, the officer said. No, don't go too far. I can't. It's safer if you're... No, that's, that's Adam. No, don't go too far. I can't. It's safer if you're really close. I hoped it would be. Projectiles were lethal. I hoped it would be. Projectiles were lethal, and my powers should prevent them from killing me somehow. Who are you? Adam. <clears throat> Adam, I groaned, and barely managed to say my name without cursing from pain. Oh yeah, I just, just kicked in the nuts. Okay. No, <clears throat> don't go too far. I can't. It's safer if you're really close. There we go. Adam, I groaned, and barely managed to say my name without cursing from pain. The car we were huddled behind hissed when splatters of goo flew overhead. Mr. Pig, help, please! The crystal creature kept its hands together in, form in the form of a gun. The police officer surveyed the... Come on, just zoom! Really? Really, program? Unbelievable. Sorry, guys, this is going to hurt the sound a little bit, but it's getting hot in here. The crystal creature kept its hands together in the form of a gun. The police officer surveyed the area, but kept an eye on the weird hand symbol being made. Her radio gave a loud chirp, then words came forth that were too garbled to hear over the crystal creature's constant plea for help. My eyes kept rolling. Do you have anything bigger? Like a pow? I asked without expectation. <laughs> Too young to fire pow pows. Only fire pews. Mr. Big, you help. Find Lady Ain't. Find Lady Find Lady Ain't. Alex. Find Lady Ain't. Find Lady Alexandria. Find Lady Ain't. Find Lady Alexandria. Need big, big. She stopped her things. I needed a fucking shirt. These pants were a mess. We've got to go, the officer said while putting a hand on my shoulder. It didn't feel reassuring. Today sucked. The longest vacation of my life had been ruined by superheroes, villains, a black unicorn, and now a creature from space who feared mole people. You might ask why I did any of this. The answer is, I really hated mole people. Any enemy of theirs was probably something I'd like to get high with. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm just going to leave it open then if you guys don't even notice. <clears throat> Assuming we didn't end up in Wonderland together... Images of Ted and the Alice popped into my brain, but were quickly discarded. My body felt a bit steadier. I prayed my powers would find an easy way out and not call down a second, larger meteor. I'll take care of the mole people, I said, while not really being sure how. What? the woman with the gun asked. I took a breath, then tried to stand before my inclination to simply wait out insanity could kick in. <laughs> The sudden movement made my legs buckle. Both hands slammed down on the car's rear for support as I rode out a fresh wave of crunched ball agony. More shots splattered. Digging engines hummed loudly. The digging engines hummed loudly. The policewoman's demands for me to pull back were annoying. Before she could grab me, I moved farther into the line of fire. Mr. Big! The creature shouted. My eyes rolled, but my feet my eyes rolled, but my feet stumbled forward. Cracks from the current crater made each step uneven. An army of mole people, fresh to the surface and ready to fight, was terrifying when it turned and hissed in unison. Hello, I said while swaying. The back of my throat tickled. Hello, I... The next few words were lost in a coughing fit as I fell to a knee and hacked. Surprisingly, the mole people stopped firing. 
They chattered at each other until one shouted loudly enough for me to understand. The Herald! The Herald is here! It said. I took short, shallow breaths to keep my lungs under control. I focused one eye on the brown and pink creatures. Listen, I'm sure it's very important. Oh. <coughs> Listen, <coughs> I'm sure it's very important. <coughs> I coughed twice more. <coughs> but you should fuck off right now, before someone angry and able to melt faces shows up. <laughs> All right, so that's it. Final note from Stefan. The actual bits of story are just under the 3,000 words of text and give a small view into the main characters, Adam, Ted, and Alice. Hopefully you get a hint of the humor, the problems... Okay, so yeah. Oh. Okay, sorry. Uh, hopefully you get a hint of the humor, the problem, and hopefully found something to laugh at in the process. I'm working to get a full-blown audio version of this story done, because I think it'll be awesome. If you enjoyed it, please consider purchasing the ebook or a physical copy since it helps me foot the bill on future projects and pay for the actual audio recording quality like Jeff's doesn't come cheap. Thanks for listening, and of course, thanks to you, Jeff, for reading. Thank you, Stefan, for requesting. I hope you guys enjoyed it. That's that's a lot of fun. I like doing those kinds of characters. I like uh, doing the, the little bit of a faster pace. Um, actually, uh... Stefan was telling me that there were some um, some auditions he was getting that were coming in at like what was it? What do you say? Like uh, nine minutes for three thousand words. And now that I now that I've read some of it, I understand how some people could go that fast. It still would be too fast. Nine minutes for three thousand words is still too fast, but um, I get it get why they would do that so thanks again Stefan. that was a great request can't wait to see some more of that one all right and what is our next our next request is game frame online by aj mail now if you guys remember uh aj <laughs> look at this cover i i totally put this on here because uh i just wanted to make fun of aj uh <laughs> because his other covers were so beautiful and and lovely and um He's actually requested, uh, what was it? Um, is it still on my list? No. It was a, it was a urban fantasy with a dude with red hair and he had like superpowers. Um, damn it. Yeah, <laughs> I knew, I knew that you, I mean, this is what Royal Road covers look like, right? But, I wanted to use it anyway because it's funny. Um, but uh, what was that? The Art of Madness. The Art of Madness is what, I, what I've done for him before. So he requested this one. This is a new one. This is a new lit RPG that he's writing. So... Oh man, I forgot. Daniel Schenhofen requested something, and I forgot to put it on the actual thread for the th for the request. So we'll put that on the next thread, and that'll be on the polls. It'll be the top one on the polls. Um, where is it? I know he, I know AJ sent it to me. Aram Stefan, where is it? Love? No, that's not it. Greetings. Feeling like a dummy. I know he sent it to me. Maybe he didn't. Okay, I think that I was dumb and I didn't send it to myself. Okay. 
Um, here it is. Sorry guys, this is this is me being dumb and disorganized. Come on. Please do what I say. There we go. That was the wrong thing. I just saw that. It was the wrong thing. There we go. There we go. Okay. Oh, wait. I can just leave it open, right? <laughs> right, I'm going to read the blurb. Would you become uploaded data in a private beta test for the chance to win $100 million. Would it matter if your body might not even make it while you were out of it? Raphael Fuller, known as Never in the gaming world, would. The world would also be happy to be rid of him while he competes. As one of the premier achievement hunters in the world, Never has the reputation of being antisocial, abrasive, and forming alliances only for his own benefit. When Alchemy, Studios, when Alchemy Studios announced a full immersion MMO, he jumped at the chance, not because of the money or recognition, though. He did it because their parent company, AGI, has the medical resources he desperately needs. Never is dying, and spending his last months fighting in an artificial world is better to him than spending them in hospitals. However, as he seeks out every challenge, there is a looming threat on the horizon. The King of the Void, the final boss of Al-Ril, his Eternia, is acting out of its programming matrix, and it's too late to pull the participants out. What sort of hero would be willing to rise to such a challenge? Never say never, because he could care less about your problems. That is, until it becomes obvious that the King of the Void is seeking a body to inhabit, and according to all known data, the body with the most connectivity to the system once belonged to Raphael Fuller. All right. So yeah, I'm already liking how uh, this guy seems like not such a good person. Earl is. Earl is. Okay, Earl is online. Gotcha. All right, so for a voice for this guy, what am I going to do here? How about Dreamer? How about this one? Kind of sounds like a kind of a kind of a douche. Kind of a douchebag. He can. Like a smarmy dickhead. Sacrifice your best friend, I told a hooded figure standing next to me, cloaked in artificial shadow. Excuse me, the figure said in a similar genderless synthetic voice we'd all been assigned during the conversion process. This is an Alchemy Studios game. They are no notorious for giving you a companion for the tutorial, put in a lot of effort to make you like them, and only after you finish do you find out that there is a locked achievement for completing the tutorial solo. The last game they did, they even had a lockout code that prevented you from starting over to get it. Sacrifice your best friend, first thing, if you want full completion. Anyways, it's just an NPC. And tutorials are built to be super easy anyway. Excuse me. Christ, you sound like a psychopath, was all they said, sliding away from me. It had been the first conversation I'd willingly had with someone in six hours. I don't get along with people well. People are complicated. But games are not. I lifted the mitten-like ivory hand... I lifted the, the mitten-like ivory hand and swiped the air in front of me to bring up the progress menu. Sixty-five percent completed. I and the dozen or so others, all identical hooded mannequin forms, floated through the infinite white space that was the preloading server. We had been selected for various reasons to join what Alchemy Studios' parent company, AGI, was calling the next evolution in entertainment. 
a synthetic world. We didn't have to sign NDAs since we'd put into mi- We didn't have to sign NDAs since we'd be put into medically induced comas for the duration our minds uploaded into the machine itself. What we did have to sign away were our legal rights and protections. While we were plugged in, our bodies would be the property of AGI, and we all knew that. They made a point of it during our orientation two days prior. Even the uploading process was experimental, and, and there was no guarantee I'd, it'd actually work, let alone be something stable enough to house not one, but many human minds. Frankly, I couldn't care less. I've not exactly had the best life, and I'm not known for being very personable, let alone nice. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Hi, I'm Raphael Fuller, and I'm a completionist. For those of you not in the know, a completionist in gaming is someone who literally makes a point of doing it all. This is tracked in many games through achievements, awards you get for doing various tasks like defeating a hard boss, fish finishing out some challenge, even defeating a set number of enemies. The list goes on and on. You got that? I do things and collect shinies, in layman's terms. Now, as I sat in the loading server, not knowing how much time had passed in the real world, a few of the others floated into a group talking among themselves. Great, I thought. Already people are forming clans. Remember how I said I wasn't that personable? The only reason I ever got invited to clans anymore was that I'm a completionist. When you're the guy who's done it all, that's when the people who need a little bit of help come out of the woodwork, not caring if you've got, that, got the bedside manner of a honey badger on a bad day. It's always good to get into a clan, but I'll admit I'm a little picky with people I associate with. Usually, I run solo. Running solo seemed to be par for the course for this group as well. I had no idea who the rest of them were, and they didn't know who I was. I liked that the best. Even if one of them had managed to learn my real name, it wouldn't have mattered. Gamers tend to be a little protective of their real identities in any case, but online handles can make or break you in the community. None of these people knew who Raphael Fuller was, but I'm damn sure at least half of them knew who never was. I had been a rising star in MMOs since I started playing at a very young age. Between neglectful parents who were more than happy to have the computer babysit me, and a need to be the best, I made quick work of the more juvenile MMOs and moved up to the mainstream ones, even if my age was a violation of the terms of service. All in all, I wanted to see what this new system was about. Let these other beta players make their guilds and clans, their little social networks that run their lives, I was only interested in beating the game and moving on. What seemed like hours passed, and I kept to myself, even when others had tried to get, get me to join them. I heard a sound like a bell in the distance, and I quickly swiped my hand in the air to bring up the progress menu. 100% uploaded. The world went out of focus for a moment, and I realized not everyone had uploaded at the same rate. This blurriness was a bit of catch-up since my completion freed up some bandwidth. Once my vision cleared and everyone seemed to be on the level, the menu changed. Patching. 1%. There may be discomfort. The world turned upside down, and I felt like I was being liquefied and pulled inside out. It didn't hurt, but I never wanted to experiencing, experience anything like it again. Time stood still while racing at millennia a nanosecond. All of us, in our pro proto avatars, clawed at the mm. clawed at the infinite white void. A chorus of similar voices screaming in confusion. Our minds were being patched like code. It felt like someone opened my head, increased its capacity, and fed it raw data. It was like a memory, but not the sort you actively remember, like how your body knows to make your heart beat or the how of remembering. I blacked out. I'm sure others did too but I was the last one up. I'm sure others did too, but I was the last one up. That's a car. When I awoke, there was a woman, maybe in her early to mid-thirties, in the room with us. Considering I could see it was a woman, and not one of the mannequin bodies the rest of us had been given, my guess was an admin. My guess was an admin. She was about six feet tall, wearing a black business suit with creases so severe I thought they were simply low-res polygons. Her hair was styled in an asymmetrical bob, 
platinum blonde hair covering her right eye. When she spoke, there was a faint Russian accent. Hello, candidates, she started. My name is Miss Levisia, and I am here not representing Alchemy Games, but rather its parent company, Acrimin... Acrimon Gemini Incorporated. With the magnitude of such a project, you must understand the gravity of what you are about to experience. She walked around the room, looking each of us up and down in turn. I assume she could see more than we could, mostly like our identities floating above our heads, like we were characters in an MMO. So, here's the deal. As of right now, there is no going back. You have opted for total immersion. Whatever your reason, I do not care. The contracts have been signed, so until the end of this project, your bodies are the property of AGI. The discomfort you all felt, some of you more than others, she looked, she said, looking in my direction, a smirk appearing on her face, is what happens currently when we update the system. Your brains have already been uploaded into the system and, as such, are data. Data we can patch and manipulate. Manipulate. As the head of security for AGI, I have been instructed to give you a brief overview overview of what is in store for you. <clears throat> I sat up, listening intently. This woman was all business, and the fact she let us know we were already past the point of no return was disconcerting. I mean... I was in this for the long run regardless, even with the discomfort of patching, but to be told we were just code? Property? Looking around at the others, I guessed from their basic body language that many were having second thoughts. However, if they were distracted and I paid attention, that could give me an edge in the game. You are about to enter a project currently referred to, in to in-house as GameFrame Online. I believe the developers at Alchemy are leaning towards a commercial game of global Technoplex Fantasia Online. <laughs> Excuse me. At that, I burst out into synthetic laughter. She whipped her head around and glared at me. Something funny? she asked. You really want to name a game you upload your consciousness into GTFO? That's a marketing nightmare to have to begin with. She smiled and then raised a hand. Remind me we need to talk one-on-one -on -one after the... overview. I gulped, even though I didn't need to. She continued. Game Frame Online is a central hub for a batch of new Total Immersion MMOs Alchemy Studios is currently developing. There are five currently available, and a six is in progress. You will be given a star rating upon the vi That was too much of a roll. You will be giving a star rating upon. Oh, I can't help it. It's two R's. Upon defeating the current final boss for each game, there are three stars available to dictate your mastery. When you three star all five live worlds, you will gain access to the sixth when it is ready to be published. With that, a door appeared at her side. It was more of an arc of light with a liquid curtain-like surface to it. It peeled back and showed a star field extending into infinity with a single golden path. The project will terminate when the first player completes the sixth game with a three-star rating. At that point, you will be given the option to remain inside or return your bodies. However, as motivation to be the first one to finish, AGI will award that player one hundred million dollars. One of the others raised their hand, and Ms. Lavicia gestured them to speak. So, you're keeping our bodies hostage? I thought this was just a game for fun. I mean, yeah, I quit my job because of this opportunity, but I thought I'd be in for maybe, you know, a couple weeks or a month or something. I had no idea I'd be signing up for this. Also, how can a game company afford to give a hundred million dollar prize for beating a beta test? Miss Lavicia smiled. It's more compensation for what we'll be doing with your bodies in the interim. After all, they are AGI property now. The technology needed to transplant a human mind into a computer has enough scientific and medical uses that we're certain the prize will be a drop in the bucket compared to what, we, what it will earn us. I had to admit, 
I felt like I made a deal with the devil and she wore a black suit. Ms. Lavicia jerked a thumb at the portal. This concludes your overview. Everyone in. Okay, there's a train. I'm going to close it for a little bit. How much more we got here? Okay, looks like I'm going to have to stop mid-chapter because it's a super long chapter. She watched as everyone lined up, but kept an eye on me and signaled for me to stay at the back of the line. I did as I was instructed. Goodness knows I didn't want to make, this any, make things any harder on myself. I watched as each player vanished through the portal, soon leaving me alone with the head of AGI security. I'm letting you know, she said, that while I find your decision to do this foolish, I can't help but respect you, considering your condition. That's one of the last things you need to know about me. I'm dying. It was the selling point for me choosing to go on this little adventure. I got uploaded into a system, and doctors could have their way with trying to figure out how to fix me without me having to actually go through the torturous ordeal of months in a hospital. The hundred million would come in handy for my future if I actually had one. The downside to all of this was, if my body died, I was stuck in the system forever. Don't get me wrong, I know no games last forever. No game lasts forever, but I've never been one to, be to believe in an afterlife. If my body was going to go within a couple of months, as far as the doctors thought, having some additional time-killing goblins seemed like the thing to do, rather than suffer through surgeries. She looked at me as if she were reading me like a book. I had no idea what sort of information she could see, considering the body I was currently in couldn't actually emote very well. You have, you have the most risk in this situation, so I'm going to do you a favor, she said, a smile forming on her face. May I call you Never? I know the importance of a code name. Please, and what sort of fa and what sort of favor? You see, Never, there's a mechanic I'll let you know about. You'll be allowed to prestige when you hit the final level. Prestige? What, like one of those idle online clicker games? You sort of start over, but you get some inherent bonus your second playthrough? She nodded. Don't worry, she said. All the achievements are locked. Once you've completed one, it's yours forever. However, they are locked to whatever level you achieve them at. Let's say there's an achievement for killing 1,000 goblins, and you get this at level 30. I nodded. The bonuses lock once... The bonuses lock once you hit level 30 on your second playthrough. However, if you should happen to kill 1,000 goblins by level 10 on your second playthrough, that resets where it is. So every subsequent playthrough, you get to get that bonus much earlier. I blinked. Was she saying what I think she was saying? Are you telling me that achievements unlock stat bonuses for your character? She nodded. Frankly, never. I couldn't give a damn about this or any other video game, but your profile got me interested in you, and as such, I did a little research on. I did a little research on. I did a little research. I did a little research into what you're known for, and thought you might find that in. Oh my God! I did a little research. Little. I did a little research into what you're known for and thought you might find that interesting. This was a game changer that would affect my long-term gameplay. If I was going to do my kill hunting, I had to do it as low level as possible, making it much more challenging, but I had to get those bonuses as early as I possibly could. So, Miss Lavicia, anything else I should know? Only that the five games... Only that the five games have the same level and prestige system. The inherent bonuses from completing achievements are copied to your core background, not just, beca not just the character in your game. When you finish one game and start another, you may notice certain boosts when you level up. 
This was a secret I would keep close to my chest for as long as possible. Oh, and Mr. Fuller, she mused, reverting to my actual name as I walked toward the portal. I've been informed that every game has a few unique stats and traits, and only through the prestige system will you even get bonuses in those stats when you cross over games. So, if I go to a fantasy game... So if I go to a fantasy game and get a ton of strength boosts, I can hulk out in your sci-fi game? She nodded, and with a snap of her fingers, disappeared from view instantly. Developer logout, I guessed. The corners of the room started to go dark and move in. I could tell that the room was beginning to de-rez. Fine, 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 I said. I'm heading out. As I did, a massive tower rose in the distance. The floor I stood on disappeared beneath me as I was levitated far above the ground. In the center was the spire, and around it were five segments of land that fit poorly together, like some mixed-up jigsaw puzzle piece like some mixed-up jigsaw puzzle pieces trying to form a pentacle. The first one that took my eye was a place of trees, small wooden and stone hovels. I could see motes of magic floating in the air. This was the high fantasy game, to be sure. Going clockwise, I saw the bridge of a starship with, an alien, with alien races running about, so I could add sci-fi spacefaring to the mix, the standards of the industry present and accounted for. To the right of that... I saw a modern-day metropolis full of flying heroes, all in unique spandex costumes. A superhero MMO? Color me surprised. They don't really make those anymore, and the few that do never live up to the legends the founding games in the genre had laid the foundation for. The fourth game grabbed my attention. I couldn't tell if it was set in the Victorian era, era or modern day with a gothic twist, but it was certainly Lovecraftian. I saw a back alley with creepy crawly tendrils and things seeping into the world that should not be there. Finally, I saw what appeared to be some sort of pastiche of steampunk and dieselpunk. A neo-noir, I thought, but upon closer inspection, the figures in trench coats and fedoras all had pointed ears. So, steampunk detectives with elves? It was something I was interested to play, but I'd have to go through the bad games first. Well, I'm certain they weren't bad games. Alchemy knows what they're doing, but I want to get those bonuses to become a god. After looking over all five games, I turned my attention back to the center, to the spire. It arose from the meeting point of the five worlds, and it looked as if it were ripping itself free from hell itself. I've heard of games that have a nightmare, inferno, or hell mode as its final challenge, but it looked like their ultimate game involved fighting demons and goodness knows what else. At the top was a bright light that shined into the heavens, piercing the clouds above it. As I floated there, looking at the five different worlds, I tried to land, thinking of, thinking of the eventual goal of unlocking each of their secrets, but I heard a booming voice from deep inside my head. Welcome to Game Frame Online! We here at Alchemy Studios are thrilled to have such well-known players involved in our alpha, final alpha transition into early beta access. Please note that by participating in this, the following features will be permanently unlocked on your accounts. Okay, I was listening. The voice continued. The first player to complete all six games with a three-star rating upon logging out will be the recipient of one hundred million dollars. Old news, and I wasn't sure if I would even have a body to go back to. Next. As a specified, as specified in your contract documents, you each have a reserved name for your account, which will transition into every game in our system. You do not need to worry about someone poaching your well-known identities in the gaming community. Great. I still got to be never and hated by a whole new group of people. The best part was they were all well-known gamers too. So they probably really hated me. As we are unsure, as we are unsure how some of the classes slash professions will work throughout beta and launch, for all involved at this stage, all such character options will be unlockable, regardless of any race restrictions we may apply at a later date. You, as founders of Game Frame Online, 
will eventually be able to have mastery over all. Also note, restrictions may not even happen later. We are considering whether to include them. This was the best news I'd heard all day. One thing I hate is creating multiple characters to unlock everything in a game. This meant I got to be me, only me, and I still got everything for my hard work. All DLC will be unlocked for you, free of charge, forever, the moment it's made available. Please note, this may be before it is commercially available to other players. Anyone within your parties will be able to freely access any missions or quests which you, cur which you are currently active in. As founders, you are to be ambassadors to new content, should you choose to... Excuse me. Should you choose to continue with Game Frame Online? It was stuck here. If I was stuck here, at least I've ha I'd have something to do until maintenance mode and eventual server decay. Finally, once a week, for 24 hours, you can use a Founder's Elixir. This will grant you double XP for all kills, mission completion bonuses, pretty much anything that could give you experience points for leveling. As a side note, if you have XP turned off to boost crafting or any skill and weapon proficiencies, this will act as a secondary multiplier, resulting in quadruple XP for those. This was epic. It was a mechanic I hadn't seen in years. Most people are so obsessed with getting to the final level, they rush through everything. What this allowed me to do was stay at much lower level and level up my proficiencies. I was definitely thinking of taking the high fantasy game, the first one I'd seen. I wasn't a huge fan of high fantasy games, but they were generally easy and straightforward, unbelievably popular, and due to that, would have a hell of a lot of easily unattainable easily attainable achievements and skill sets I could use in the later games. Uh, we're almost done. No, uh, okay. The voice continued. Now then, Founder, choose your first world. Please understand you will be locked in until you complete the quests therein and have achieved at least a one-star rating in that game. Only then will you be able to log out and select a new one, which you will then be locked into under the same conditions. This is a final reminder. Any games without at least one star a one-star rating are unable to be logged out from to select another game. Where you choose next will likely be your home for the coming weeks, possibly months. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. So this is an interesting concept. Thanks again, AJ Mayall, for requesting. Uh, if you want me to continue this one, I'm totally willing to uh, go a little bit further on, on a second request. So be sure to do that once once uh, Danny Katz gets the new uh, request thread poll up. Um, that's on Royal Road, guys, so go check it out if that sounded interesting to you. And on to our last request for tonight. And by the way, tonight is the last night that I'm going to be doing four requests. Um, I think that three requests is probably going to be my limit from now on, just for time's sake. And so I don't take up all the requests um, that, that are available. But here is our last one. It is Office Wars by James G. Patton. Um, so this one seems like quite a twist on the lit RPG genre because it's like more of a, well, I'm not exactly sure, but it seems more like a kind of a Sims type of game. So let's see how it goes. No, that's not it. So Office Wars, The Mailroom Clerk by James G. Patton. Okay, I'm not sure. Okay, let's see here. 
system. Okay, so he's got a bunch of tower climber. Yes, voting is important for this show. We want to get more audience engagement. So whenever you guys whenever you guys request something, tell people. Tell people you requested here. Tell them to come out, come to the Sound Booth Theater Live uh, Facebook uh, page, group, Facebook group, Facebook group, and tell them to vote for you so that you're for sure going to be on the next requests only. Oh, uh, James G. Patton is here. What's up, James or Gabe? I guess your real name's Gabe. James is your pen name. Um, and uh, so, yeah. You vote first of all. If if you request, you need to add it in the poll. Um, Danny's going. If if you don't do it, Danny might do it. He might catch it. He might not. So don't depend on him to catch it, because your vote counts. But Danny's vote doesn't count. So anytime he sees something, he's going to vote on it. Just because he's going to be posting them as well. He's going to be adding them as options as well. So his vote's not going to count. I can't vote. I only vote as as like a tiebreaker, you know, and that'll be once the show starts, I'll make the decision. So definitely bring people here, uh, bring bring your readers here, you know, any and and tell them to vote for you so that you can be on the show. Um, okay, so this is this is what John gave me for James gave me for uh, for directions for his characters. I think. Okay, so system, or whatever he calls it, a chime followed by an Alexa-type voice. At least in my head, that is what I hear. Alexa is as in Amazon Echoes Alexa, not my story Alexa. Or if you can think of something better or more interesting to voice it as, I'm pretty easygoing if he thinks he has a way to pull it off. Oh, okay, okay, this is, okay, <laughs> this is, all right, Danny wrote this up. Uh, he's okay. So what the author actually said, I'm pretty easy going. If he thinks he has a way to pull it off, especially since the AIs in my books are smart asses, I'm willing to work with it like a Gladys. <laughs> like, a, like a Gladys from uh, from Portal Onion MC, also known as Bran outside of the game. Mostly a smartass that tries to stay out of the limelight, but his mouth and actions often get him mixed up in things. He tends to bring people together with humor and has a temper if people act like assholes to him or friends. Also tends to find humor in most situations, and when nervous, says crazy things before he realizes he's saying them. Okay. Fungi. Large man, red-headed... Large red-headed man. In the game, he chose a maintenance worker, and he likes to crack jokes and has a very affable attitude. Onion and Fungi hit it off right away. His voice in my head does have a kind of twang, but not to the point of being a cowboy. Just not a city boy. Okay. I'll just be me for that guy. Zingo. Refined and educated in attitude. Very easygoing and will even crack a joke, but he almost has an OCD quality about him with his appearance. He's not condescending, more like someone's grandpa. Gives advice, tells jokes, but rarely judges people for their actions. Alexa. Taciturn. She rarely speaks, and when she does, it is to the point. I hear her in my head with a softer voice, but she is by no means shy or weak. She's smart and quick-witted, and will get her point across in the fewest words possible, and often keeps her opinions to herself. How about Daria for Alexa? You know, you know, like the cartoon Daria. Nevi. Almost the opposite of Alexa. Has no problem speaking her opinion. The MC gets the feeling she has been spoiled most of her life and has not had to actually work for a living. He also suspects she might be... Okay, I'm not gonna... I hear her voice is not particularly high-pitched, but her manner of speaking annoys the MC, as if she's constantly judging everyone. She's also well-educated in speech and mannerisms, okay? Bob, leader of the group. Dower. The man is very businesslike and is frustrated a lot with Onion, Fungi, and Zingo due to their jokes and playing around. He does not lose his temper, but he orders them about as if he was maybe ex-military. He's playing to win. Also, he does not order them about in a way that puts him in as a dictator of the group, and he is respectful to the rest of the group. I hear his voice with an edge to it that lets people know he is used to giving orders. Okay. Well, here goes. 
So I'm Onion. Okay, I'm gonna be... I'm gonna use my Frank character. I, I don't often do Frank with first person, and I like to to practice with him. Um, I don't see anything about his stature or anything, so if he sounds too big or whatever, sorry. <clears throat> we'll see. Chapter 7. Chamber of Elements. I swiped the one-hour warning away. The gesture caused my vision to distort, and I put my hand up again. <clears throat> there it was again. The distortion, only it was coming from one of the boxes ahead of us. Hold up, I called out, walking over to it. This seem off to you? All right, and Zingo is again, Zingo is. All right. Now that you mention it, no, Zingo said, and it caught me off guard enough that I laughed. I see it, Bob said. Not sure what, but nice catch. Alexa was nodding as well. Rubbing my hands along the edge of the box, I found a catch and undid it. The front of the box swung open like a door, and inside a set of stairs leading downward. Seriously? I asked myself. Perception plus one. Perception is now sixteen. You received saint points. And then fungi, fungi, large red-headed man. Uh, let's see. Uh, aren't we supposed to go up? Fungi, fungi asked. Yes, but that does not mean this is not a shortcut to that place, Bob said. Bob said, vote. Do we continue onward or go down those steps? Vote now. Onward or downward? That was a tough choice because this looked like the kind of thing that could go either way. On the other hand, aimlessly wandering around was not helping us. I chose downward. It was a three to three tie. All right, let me check one more character here. Oh, oh, okay. Never mind. Anyone want to change their vote? Bob asked. I will not make any arguments either way because I will influence most of you. Anyone want to back up their reasoning? I only picked downward because I think this is how we progress, and I doubt we're going to find a door with an exit sign above it. I admit the stairs look creepy as shit, but wandering around these boxes for hours is a worse alternative. I said my piece. In my opinion, anyway. All right, I will change my vote, Nevi said. Uh, uh, no, wait, that's... Nevi's the... The bitchier one, right? Yeah. All right, I will change my vote, Nevi said. It is a sound argument. Downward it is, Bob said, and led the way. Since I was the last one in, I closed the door behind us. I could not seal it again, but I could try to disguise it. It might buy us some time. The stairs led down into a cement tunnel that was lit up by very low lighting. Uh, big red-headed guy that throws the logs in Braveheart. Okay. I can't remember what that guy sounds like. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Visibility was shit, but it looked like we were in a maintenance tunnel. That is, if you could hide a maintenance tunnel in a box. It was a little chilly, but otherwise nothing seemed odd about this place. I was wondering if it was just a hidden tunnel from one side of the floor to the other. See anything, maintenance guy? It seems like your territory, 
Bob asked, coming to the same conclusion as me. Nah, man. Most of the things... Most of the things for my class everyone can see. What? No. Most of the things... Oh, yeah. Nah, man. Most of the things for my class everyone can see. They just cannot access it. I will keep an eye out, because maybe there's more to it than that. First time playing this thing, and probably the last time. Especially if my death is going to be as painful as the deaths I'd already witnessed. Not a wuss, but not a masochist either. At some point, the tunnel opened up into a large square room. Bob hesitated to enter it, and some of the group crowded around to see into the chamber. What are we looking for? I asked Fungi, and the look on his face told me he almost shit himself. That ability is fucking freaky! I forgot you were with our group. I forgot you were with our group. No joke. Warn a brother next time you sneak up on him, Fungi said, trying to get his heart rate back down, and I just smiled, shaking my head. I was not sneaking. I walked right up in front of you, and your eyes darted all around me. Talk about freaky. Ever seen a person's eyes go in two different directions? Yours did, I said, smiling and slapping Fungi on the back. He was a likable guy and I could appreciate a fellow smartass. Bob entered the room, but everyone else hung back. Okay, the IT girl, I guess that would be Alexa. Down, the IT girl said. Other than her name, I had not heard her talk. Bob ducked, and a jet of flame shot over his head. Whoa, that would have been bad. The second tile in there, avoid it. Now that she pointed it out, I could see it slightly glowing in my sight. The titles were roughly two foot square. They did not stand out in any way that would have made it easy to avoid, either. The tile was partly a trap, but I knew a puzzle room when I saw one. But I knew a puzzle room when I saw one. Once we were in the room, we all saw the massive metal door on the other side of it. The door only confirmed my suspicion because there was no obvious way to open it. Now what? Bob started to ask as the door we entered through as the door we entered through started closing. Shit! It was too late, and the door slammed closed like the lid of a coffin. The door looked like the one on the other side of the room. Both were large and metal and looked airtight, like something I would see on a navy ship. On the positive side, as soon as the door closed, the lights brightened, and then all was still. I moved slowly about the room, tapping tiles, hoping I had time to react. There was more to this room. I just knew it. A tile clicked underfoot, and a gust of air picked me up and threw me across the chamber. It happened so fast that I had no time to react. The hurricane... The hurricane-like wind lessened the further I flew, and I found myself falling slower than I expected, until the wall stopped my momentum, and I dropped like a stone the rest of the way to the floor. The wall hurt like hell, and I slowly stood on my shaking legs. Fuck! That scared the hell out of me! Checking my stats, I saw that I only took a few points of damage, but damn, I was still shaking with fear. You all right? Zingo asked. I'm good. I was expecting something. Just not that, I said, as I pulled up the alert message blinking in the corner. Perception plus one. Perception is now seventeen. You gained the skill Light Step. Rewarded, rewarded for crossing a room without your feet making a sound. Light Step muffles your footsteps, making you harder to detect. I grumbled upon reading the message. Someone had a sense of humor. Have you lost your mind? And what do you mean you were expecting something like that? Bob asked. Not crazy. Just irritated at the system messages. Not sure if they are fucking with me or the system is trying to reward me. Did you hit your head? You are not making much sense, Bob asked. Sorry for crossing the room without my feet making a sound. I got the skill light step. See my dilemma? 
I know the AI is smart enough to know that that did not happen, so I feel like it's fucking with me. Whoa! You got another skill? Who cares if the system is jerking you around? That is awesome! Fungi said. What does it do? Muffles the sound of my... the... Muffles the sound my footsteps make. Yeah, what Fungi said. Stop bitching. That skill is awesome and it fits your build perfectly. Even if you did cheat to get it, Bob said, in his... in his bobbly way. But he was smiling at me. Now, what do you mean you expected to get blown across the room? Before I tell you, tone back the sales pitch stuff. It is screwing with me and makes me nauseous every time you use it, I explained to Bob. That is why I feel ill? Alexa asked. I haven't spoken much because I always feel like I'm going to vomit. I think so. Every time Bob reasons or does anything that tries to convince someone, I feel it. So if I'm not feeling it, does that mean he has persuaded me? Fungi asked. That is so messed up. Perception is only part of it. Bob cannot convince you to go against your nature. So he could talk you into walking down a hallway, making a trade, but if you strongly disagree with whatever he tells you, then it will not work. Okay, enough. Onion, explain what is going on. It is a puzzle room, but not sure yet how it works. However, that was fire. That is air. So I would guess there are two more pressure plates for water and earth, I speculated. Look at this. It is a symbol of some sort, Zingo said. While we were talking, he had moved over to the other's other door and was rubbing his fingers against an etching of some sort. Steam. This door needs to needs steam to open. Then we need to find water, Bob said. Thanks, Captain Bobvious, Fungi said, and I found myself chuckling, even gave him a fist bump. Wait, we better get this right, or I am pretty sure we are going to surf suffocate. That door sealed tight behind us. Fire is going to burn up our oxygen, and water is going to fill this place up. Steam might burn all of us. Big burly Scottish accent? I'll try it. Air. We do not need to fill the whole room with steam. We need just enough for the air to push it towards the door. Other than the two people standing on the tiles for fire and water, everyone else can stay against the back wall, Alexa contributed. Um. This sounds like a plan. Let's do it with one change. The fire and water people will stand on their tile until there is enough steam, and then they run to the back before we trigger the air tile. We have to do it quickly before the steam dissipates. Whoever is going to hit the air plate, they will have their legs held by someone and crab walk to the tile and, and hit it. Might prevent any of us getting thrown into the chaos, Bob said. We all searched the room for the other tiles, and I noticed an etching on the ones we already identified. Look at the tile itself, and you should see a symbol on it, I said over my shoulder. Here! Found Earth! Water is here, Nevi called out. She was not far from Zingo near our exit. Okay, we know fire and air shoot into the middle of the room. Should we test the water tile first? Bob asked. But before anyone could agree, Nevi tapped it with her foot and ducked. A blast of water, like from a fire hose, shot across the room and hit Bob right in the face, knocking him over towards the wind tile. Fungi grabbed him and pulled him back, but most of us were trying our damnedest not to laugh. Nevi's jaw practically hit the floor as she saw Bob get blasted across the room, but even she showed signs of laughter suppre suppression. The sealed lips, big eyes, and the shaking body. Oh, she was in full laughter denial, and I admired her willpower. <clears throat> Looks like Onion gets water duty, 
Zingo said. Hey, my cognitive ability just went up. Why? Shouldn't we all draw straws or something? Alexa asked. It is okay. I will take water, and it is because I have the speed attribute. Oh, what? No, this is... Onion. It is okay. I will take water, and it is because I have the speed attribute. Zingo does too, but with my perception, I can react more quickly to whatever happens. In other words, I have the best chance to survive. No more talking. Let's do this before we run out of oxygen, Bob said, clapping his hands at us to get our attention. I'll take fire. The rest of you get to the back now. Bob was not happy, but getting all wet tended to put anyone in a foul mood. Part of Bo Bob's wardrobe consisted of a sports coat, which was dripping water everywhere he walked. I briefly wondered if getting soaked like that could ruin the items in our inventory. Bob and I were both poised by our tiles, and Nevi was on the floor with Zingo and fung Fungi holding onto her legs. Alexa had her back pressed against the wall and tried to remain out of the way. Once Bob saw we were all ready to move, he looked over at me. Now, Bob said, and we both stepped on our tile and ducked. Flame and water shot towards the middle and hit together with a sizzle. I was not aware the roof was domed until that moment. When do we stop? I yelled. No idea! Screw it! Screw it! Run for it on three! Bob said. One, two, three! On three, we both sprinted around opposite sides of the room. I ran around the left side of the chamber away from where Bob had been because I did not want to collide into him. Nevy, now! Bob yelled. My legs moved with wild abandon, and I careened so fast towards the back wall I was afraid I would not be able to stop. The wind gusted outward, but it only buffeted me slightly. Speed plus one. Speed is now fifteen. Nice! I was hoping for that attribute to go up. Holy crap! That speed is no joke! Fungi called out over the wind. If I get invited back... If I get invited back next year, I am taking a speed class. I thought you weren't playing again? I asked, giving him shit. Changed my mind. The game is kind of fun. As the wind died down, we heard a loud clinking sound. A few pings came next, like a ball-peen hammer hitting metal. As we watched, the metal door of our exit started to fall into the room, and as it picked up momentum, I braced for the impact. The, the fat bastard. <laughs> the door slammed onto the ground with such force I felt my teeth rattle. That part was bad enough, but it landed on the water tile and water shot across the room. The sounds started repeating, but they were coming from the door we entered through. The door near the fire tile. We looked at each other, and without saying a word, we all sprinted for the exit. <laughs> Yeah, that was fun with the, with the Scottish accent. All right, cool. That was Office Wars, the mailroom clerk. Thanks again, James Patton, for requesting that one. It was fun. I like I like the the different setting, the more uh, I don't know, arcadey video game feel to it. Um, but anyway, that was Sound Booth Theater Live requests only, my friends. Thank you so much for attending. Thank you so much for everybody who requested. Um, if you want. I eat because I'm unhappy, and I'm unhappy because I eat. Get in my belly. Oh, man. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, if you want to request something else, if you want to request something else from, from your book, uh, keep an eye out on, uh, on Sound Booth Theater Live. I think probably maybe Danny can start the new thread right after this. Uh, the new the new poll, and um, uh, we'll get your requests on there, and then get the poll going, and then you can invite all of your people who who read your books over to. Oh man, Katy Katy Perry versus Jason is over. That one's done. Um, it was it was very short, very very good, amazing literature. Um, so. Yeah, uh, keep an eye out for that thread. 
Also, I hope uh, I, I hope I hope we kept track of who to give free audiobooks to. Um, don't forget to go check out Hero of, of Thera and Everrealm. Um, we haven't decided the new time. Um, I think. Let's see. I'm not sure. Maybe this Wednesday. Okay, so the next Sound Booth Theater Live is gonna be a surprise. Okay, it's gonna it's gonna be the day that Harmon Cooper's new surprise book is coming out. Um, I'm gonna be doing the Sound Booth Theater Live that day, so keep an eye out for when that happens. Um, but uh, we're we're still trying to figure out exactly what is the best time to do Sound Booth Theater Live. So. Again, I, there's another poll there on the Facebook group, so go check that out. Go go look at that poll, and uh, if no, neither of the times that are on the poll look good to you, add another add another option. But we need more more uh, viewer feedback to know what what a good time is. I mean, it's looking like people are preferring the Wednesdays, but there I mean, like it's a pretty close vote right now, so. Please, uh, please invite more people to the Facebook group to get more, um, get 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 more, you know, interaction. We we need a we need the audience to grow so that we get uh, more feedback from people and so that each of these episodes has more impact for all the authors who request their stuff. Because you know what I really want for this show to develop into is kind of just a way for uh, authors who I haven't worked with yet or. Um, authors who I am working with and whose stuff I'm producing, um, <clears throat> uh, just just a way for us to have fun promoting things for, for authors. So if you have author friends, if you're an aspiring author yourself, join the group and uh, keep coming back. You know, it's, it's, it's fun. I, and I can't, t I can't take all the jobs from all the requests that we get, you know, uh, it's just not in the schedule, but, um, you know, there, there are some that I will be making deals with people. I've, I've done it before. So, uh, this is a good way to figure out what's coming up. If you like a certain request that I've done, start a thread and start asking people or start trying to, you know, uh, petition me to, to do the book or something. I don't know. There's a lot, there's a lot that can be done in the Facebook group and I encourage you all to, to participate and post and have fun there. So, uh, yeah, so that's, that's the show guys. And, uh, thanks so much for coming. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. I don't know how to end this show. I'm very bad at it. So I'm going to stare stupidly at my computer screen for a while, because if I hit this stream button, it's just going to cut off while you're watching. And, um, so I, what I have to do is like, wait for a second and then hit it because there's a delay. Never mind. Just go away. Just leave me alone now. I have stuff to do.